I know what you're thinking. This is a Thursday. Why is there a plenty of difficult video out? Well, I found this video on my computer. I actually made it last year and completely forgot about it. So this is why this video won't have a bingo card or disaster scale at the end. Whilst I've got you here, I want to say a very warm thank you to all of you for your likes, comments, subscribes and the essential hitting the bell icon. We're so close to a million subscribers and we can almost taste it. So thank you very much for your support and let's go for it. Let's check out this video I found down the back of the sofa. It is the 17th of May 1998 and an old, rusty and burnt out ship's hull is sinking below the waves of the Porto di Laverno, Italy. The vessel has been moored up here for nearly seven years and has acted as a very visual reminder of a deadly tragedy. The wrecked hull will be salvaged and eventually sent to Turkey for breaking up. Although, when she has gone for scrap, the memory of the ship's final working moments has quite literally been burnt into Italian history as it's one of the worst naval disasters ever since the bloody days of World War II. You probably know the name of the ship, but for those who don't, she is called the Moby Prince, and during a fatal day in April 1991, all aboard but one will be lost. Welcome to Plain and Difficult, my name is John. the ship. So you might be thinking this is a little bit of deja vu, right? Well, funnily not. Our story is kind of if the MT Haven and the MS Herald of Free Enterprise disasters had a god-awful baby. Our story starts with a ferry built back in Blighty at Birkenhead in by Camel Laird and Co Limited in 1967, with her launch in February 1968 under the name of Queen Juliana for the SMZ Company of Holland for use as a passenger and vehicle ferry. She was 131.2 metres long with a width of 20.48 metres and a weight of 6,682 gross 3,475 net or 1,290 deadweight tonnes and had a capacity of 1,200 passengers at maximum but usually for normal service, no more than 750 were allowed aboard. And this also had on top of that, 220 cars. During her fit out, she suffered a fire, which would turn out to be a bit of a bad omen of sorts later on in her history. She was pressed into service for the Harwich and Hook of Holland route, which she worked until 1984. During this time, she was branded under British Rail's sealing colours. In 1985, she would be rebranded as the Holland Trade Ship, but her time under the Dutch flag was coming to an end, when in 1985, she was sold off Navi Gazzoni Archipelago Maddalino SPA of Naples, Italy. There, she would be run under the Navarma Lines brand, with a new name, the Moby Prince, running between Cagliari and Naples, but eventually changing to the Livorno to Albina in Sardinia route. All would be normal for the ship. Well, until it wasn't on a fateful day in April 1991. The disaster. So it's the evening of the 10th of April 1991 and the area around Livorno Harbour, Italy is a little bit foggy. The time is close to 10pm and the Moby Prince is about to start her seven hour journey to Albina in Sardinia. Tonight, she is under the command of Captain Hugo Chassa. Aboard is 141 people. As she departs the port, the Moby Prince collides with the Agip Abruzzo, a 330.7 metre long, 51.81 metre wide oil tanker. The ferry's bow struck the area of the number 7 tank, which was full in total of 80,000 tonnes of Iranian light crude oil. The collision sprayed oil onto the deck of the Moby Prince and into the sea surrounding both vessels, which quickly resulted in a raging inferno. Flames spread across the Moby Prince's deck. Captain Superina of the Agip Abruzzo ordered full power 
in an attempt to separate both ships. It was successful, but in doing so, several tons of oil was sprayed onto the burning ferry, literally adding fuel to the fire. At 25 minutes past 10, the ferry's radio operator broadcast its first Mayday message from a portable VHF transmitter. At 10.36, VA Gip Abruzzo also reported the collision, but wrongly thought that they had collided with another small fuel ship. This meant that the presence of the 141 aboard the Moby Prince was not known to rescue workers. The crew aboard the Agrip Bruzo were swiftly rescued as firefighters focused on the burning oil tanker. Aboard the Moby Prince, members of the crew abandoned their posts, leaving the engines running and the air circulation systems in operation, resulting in the smoke being pumped into the interior of the vessel. This made escape almost impossible for many stuck aboard. As the flames spread, the crew took passengers to the fireproof deluxe lounge. This could hold off the flames, but it could be susceptible to the deadly smoke. The crew thought that they would be rescued rather quickly due to the Moby Prince being so close to the harbour. But sadly, the Mayday calls fell on deaf ears due to the weak signal of the portable radio. The ship disappeared behind the smoke and fog leaving her discovery until over an hour after the fire had begun. Rescue workers had been looking for a completely different ship. Due to rescue not arriving, those stuck in the lounge became trapped by the flames. Those aboard the Moby Prince slowly suffocated from the smoke in the lounge and the heat on deck. At 11.35, the Moby Prince was finally found by two tugboats. When she was found, only one survivor was rescued. In all, 140 people had lost their lives aboard the Moby Prince. At around 3.30am, another tugboat captain was able to board the Moby Prince and a tow line was attached, with the still burning ship being taken back to Laverno. Later on in the morning, the fire aboard the Moby Prince was extinguished in the port. It was discovered that the air conditioning was still running. Rescue workers who boarded the ship only found bodies. Many were not burned, showing that they had actually been suffocated. A truly horrible demise. Tons of oil had been spilled into the sea, making it one of the worst oil spills in Italian history, but only for a day, and I'll mention that a bit later on in the video. With 140 dead, the cause had to be found, but it would seem the story would be a little bit murky. The investigation. So this part of the video is going to be a little bit open-ended, as there is a little bit of a mystery as to why the two ships collided. You see, there's still a lot of speculation as to whether the Moby Prince was off course, the Agip Abruzzo had dropped anchor in the wrong place, or even the presence of a third unknown ship. In the immediate aftermath, the investigation highlighted several possible courses. Of course, the loss of nearly all aboard the Moby Prince meant that the captain and crew on the bridge couldn't be interviewed. And clearly the night was confusing as the presence of the ferry wasn't even realised until an hour post-crash. Sadly, if the Moby Prince was discovered earlier, then it was likely more lives could have been saved. But the confusion of the night meant that the search and rescue efforts were terribly hindered. It was discovered that the Moby Prince had her radar switched off, which was a fatal error. However, not the sole cause. It was also thought that the Agrippa Bruzo had been anchored in the exclusion area right at the entrance of the harbour, thus putting it into the way of other ships. Which in the fog was a deadly mistake. But again, it's not 100% certain of the ship's location, as her captain made contradictory statements as to where they had dropped anchor. The captain's log mysteriously was lost. This would have likely shown the exact location of the Agrippa Bruzo. There was a lot of speculation of a mystery ship as well, which had caused potentially the collision. The unidentified vessel was thought to be a US military asset. Radio recordings and verbal accounts had been heard during the accident. However, no one came forward to confirm if an unidentified US ship was operating nearby. The disaster yielded some criminal charges for multiple culpable homicide and arson charges against the third officer, Valentino Rolla of the Agip Abruzio, the acting commander of the tanker at the time, and Angelino Cedro, deputy commander of the Port Authority, and also guard officer Lorenzo Jacacchi. But all were absolved. In the 1990s, at least responsibility for the disaster was never established. Another investigation would open in July 2021 by the Italian Parliament. 
Their report, issued on the 15th of September 2022, pointed the finger at a third ship, which had caused the Moby Prince to take evasive action right into the Agip Abruzzo. In the years leading up to the investigation, more evidence had been found, including material off the harbour seabed. Although now a third ship is likely the initiating cause, the identity is still unknown. The Agip Abruzzo would be scrapped in 1992, and the Moby Prince would follow after another brief sinking in 1998. Now I did mention that the disaster was one of Italy's worst oil spills. It was actually its worst, albeit just for one day, because the MV Haven disaster would take that title just a day later, making April 1991 a terrible month for Italian shipping. Luckily for you, I've already covered this story, so please feel free to check it out after this video. This is a Plain Difficult production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Like Licensed. Plain Difficult videos are produced by me, John, in a currently mild corner of southern London, UK. I have Instagram and a second YouTube channel, so check them out if you want to see other random stuff I make. And also I'd like to have a very warm welcome to thank you to my Patreon and YouTube members who support this channel financially, as well as the rest of you for tuning in every week. All I always have to say is thank you for watching, and Mr. Music, play us out please.